Yeah, yeah. Welcome, Bike. Week 11, Waiver Wire, featured film. Our Waiver Wire rankings are live right now on BDGE.co. Got to be a big dog member to get them, but we're going to gap through the entire trending up and down list on Sleeper as we do every single week. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're old here, oh, welcome, Bike. And make sure you got your shit tucked. We came tucked today. We came tucked. <laughs> What we're going to do is run down the trending list, talk about players I would invest in, players I would drop some fab dollars in, and we'll start off at the top of the list here uh, with Mr. Noel Brown, who's obviously put together back-to-back ridiculous games, six for 153 and a touchdown a week ago, seven for 172 this previous week. Now, a little bit of uh, uncertainty, right? Like, I I think the hesitation with Noel Brown is no one really believed he was a great player to begin with. This is what happens when you surround yourself with other great players that elevate teammates. I'm talking about C.J. Stroud. He is making everyone look like an animal. Now, Noah Brown was the starter going into the year above Tank Dell. Then Noah Brown got hurt. Tank Dell kind of took over. Noah Brown came back. Then Nico Collins got hurt. Robert Woods got hurt. Robert Woods is back now. He was running 60% of the routes while Noah Brown was up at like 75, 80% of the routes. It's a little bit confusing. I'm not going to lie. If Nico Collins is out, Noah Brown is a fantastic start. So is Tank Dell. So are most of the passing options in this offense. Plus, they go against Arizona that just donates points to fantasy wide receivers and fantasy quarterback. So Noah Brown, for me, feels like a great flex option regardless. He's making huge plays. He averaged over 24 yards per reception last week. So while Nico Collins obviously puts a little bit of a damper on the Noah Brown parade, it feels like this offense is sticky. It feels like this offense is going to be a pass heavy, pass first, pass down the field, and pass efficiently type offense. So I would rank them Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Noah Brown. But if Nico Collins is out, you start Tank Dell and Noah Brown emphatically with no hesitation this upcoming week against Arizona. Even if Nico Collins is back, Noah Brown can be thrown into your flex spot without a doubt in PPR leagues, in any kind of league, to be honest with you. You just earned it from the performances he's put up the last couple of weeks. Now, with Noah Brown, I, I don't want to go crazy because there's the there's the realistic chance that, you know, once Nico Collins is back and Robert Woods is playing again, it's like Dalton Schultz, Tank Dell. There, there's a lot going on in this offense. There's a lot going on in this offense. They have a great schedule going forward. Arizona, Jacksonville, Denver, Jets are tough, but Tennessee, Cleveland, Tennessee. So they get the Tennessee defense twice in the last three weeks. Any injury to any of those players moves – everybody kind of up because it's relatively condensed. I know I named a lot of players, but it's condensed in terms of who is catching the passes. There's like three guys that really do it. So no Brown's a dude that I would, I would probably spend somewhere from the 20 to 25% fab range on the rest of this week is pretty much occupied by the running back position. Cause we have Alexander Madison, who is in the concussion protocol, probably misses next week against the Denver Broncos. We just saw James Cook and Latavius Murray light them up on the ground last night. They're a team that can definitely be ran against. Now, Ty Chandler was a dude that I really liked in the preseason. He's explosive. He gives them something that the Vikings backfield has not gotten. And obviously this backfield or this team in general is way better than we thought they were going to be coming into the year, right? With Josh Dobbs, I expect this offense to continue humming. Justin Jefferson coming back, like Ty Chandler got the goal line carry last week. Ty Chandler was splitting work with Alexander Madison before he got hurt. So it tells you that he was probably forcing a running back by committee regardless. And if Madison's out for this week, you're getting a plug and play. I want to say RB2, but also I do want to I do want to caution a little bit. This was something I said in the live stream yesterday. It's a mistake that we make often as fantasy players. We assume that volume over a long period of time is good, but just basing things on volume in small sample sizes is tough to correlate. It's tough to actually, the point I'm fucking getting to is like Ty Chandler, there's a reason that he was the third string guy here. There's a reason that Alexander Madison played over him all year. There's a reason that they went and traded for Cam Akers. And there's a reason that Ty Chandler was the third guy in the depth chart the entirety of the season. Okay. There's a reason backups are backups. There's a reason third stringers are third stringers. A lot of the times when these guys get their chance, they perform like backups and third stringers. So while he will be thrust into a starting role, if Madison is out and he will be thrust into a relatively high volume role and he's an explosive player, I will say proceed with caution in terms of like, he's a must start guy. You might have other players on the lineup in which even if you have Ty Chandler, you're still sitting him. And I think that's okay. 
to maneuver that way. If he does, I, I, I do think there's also upside long term, though. So you play, you know, both sides of the spectrum here. I think there's upside in the fact that, like, if he does play really, really well here, there's no guarantee that when Alexander Madison comes back, Madison's the 1A to this 1B. It could be Ty Chandler and then Alexander Madison in the pecking order. So with Ty, you know, I, I do want to try to get him, especially if I need a flex or, or an RB2 player for this week with all these buys coming up still. We still have four more teams on buy. So Chandler's a dude that I would probably drop somewhere from 12 to 18 percent, maybe upwards of like 20, 22 percent if if you're really desperate for him, if your league is uh, aggressive. But now's the time to also look at if you have fab remaining, look at the other look around the league and look at the fab amount of other league mates, right? Like there might only be two dudes left with fab or two dudes left with more than five dollars of fab. And then look at the rosters, right? Like one of those dudes might not even need a running back. One of those dudes might not have anybody that they can realistically drop. So they're not going to go out of their way to bid $27 on a Ty Chandler. So now's the time where there's not that many moving parts left. Most people have blown their fab. Most people have their rosters kind of locked up and solidified. So you can use a lot more of the context clues around your league to maneuver on the waiver wire. And Ty Chandler, I feel like, is a good example of making sure to do that for this week in particular. Moving on down, Devin Singletary is definitely super highly owned. Um, he has a great matchup this week against Arizona as well. He's coming off a 30 fucking carry game. Damian Pierce did not practice at all last week. So I think there's a realistic chance, 50-50, if not like 60-40, that he does not play again. And if he doesn't, Devin Singletary is pretty much a must-start top 15 fantasy running back in week 11 because they've already shown that they trust him in a very high level volume role and the matchup and game script should be in his favor so if he is somehow available i also think he probably earned the role over damian pierce it'll be a committee when he comes back but probably more 1a to 1b than it was reverse rico dowdle i get it i get it uh he's like the handcuff to tony pollard and might actually just perform better than tony pollard going forward but there's it, it's like if you want if you have pollard you want to own Dowdle, but it feels ridiculous because Tony Pollard is probably like the RB24. Do you handcuff that? If Pollard gets hurt, Rico Dowdle steps into a massive role, and I think he's a must start player. So you can kind of do with that what you want. I don't think he's like someone that you need to go out of your way for. People are a little bit hyped up because he had a big game based on like garbage time production, but I do think they feel relatively comfortable with him in that like uh, secondary role to Tony Pollard. So Dowdle should be owned, but I, I think he's a little bit of a luxury in the fact that you'll never actually feel comfortable starting him. So you're using a roster spot on the hopes that somebody gets injured as opposed to other guys that are probably available on the waiver wire that you might be able to throw into your lineup ASAP. Jalen Guyton's the next guy up on this list. I think he played really well. He hadn't played in like 18 months or something like that. He came back, went four for 40 in a touchdown without Josh Palmer, without Mike Williams, uh, banged up Gerald Everett. Like this team needs playmakers and Jalen Guyton Looked pretty good. He looked more spry than fucking Quentin Johnson. So we'll see how his playtime develops. He came back and he was immediately an 80% snap guy. That's uh, that's pretty big time. They get Green Bay. Baltimore's tough. New England's kind of tough. Denver, Las Vegas, Buffalo, Denver, though. Pretty good playoff schedule there. So I drop a couple fab dollars on, on Guyton if I needed a wide receiver. Keep on moving down. Cooks, I, I feel like Cooks is a little bit of fool's gold this week. If you look at the entirety of the season, he had one game over four targets. And then he had 10-9, 173, and one. And I will say, Dak Prescott is playing the best ball of any QB in the NFL right now. And obviously that's going to pour over into other playmakers. But this was like New York Giants. They also do get Carolina next week. They get Washington, Seattle at home, Philly at home, Buffalo at home. Miami. This is a great fucking schedule. This is a great schedule for pass catchers here. Do I trust Cooks? I don't know. He is running still like 75, 85% of the routes. So I think his floor is okay. But the ceiling, I think, is is tricking people a little bit right now. So I'm not going to overspend on Brandon Cooks because there's probably a dud game coming or three dud games coming in a row based off what we've already seen this season. Trey McBride's way too highly owned to talk about. Keaton Mitchell's the other guy that, like, he had very, very limited volume in this previous week. Three carries, two targets. Uh, that was, in my opinion, way more due to the injury that he suffered, like, late in the week. But if he's available on your waiver wire, he's a dude that I think has massive upside over the remainder of the season because Keaton Mitchell is going to take Justice Hill's entire role. Justice Hill has shown no explosion where Keaton Mitchell has literally only shown explosion. Keaton Mitchell, every time he touches the ball, is fucking electric. Passing game, ground game. It, like, it doesn't matter. You get this guy the ball in space and he is going to make magic happen. Magic Mitchell is someone that I would spend. He has a ton of upside over the last six weeks of the season. I would say as much upside, if not more, than pretty much any player on the waiver wire this week. I think I think Keaton Mitchell, I feel more comfortable 
with being involved in his offense than Ty Chandler, to be honest with you. I think they have similar upside going forward. Maybe Ty Chandler takes that cake because he can win the starting role and kind of keep it. Whereas Gus Edwards is going to continue to have uh, a goal line role there. But other than that, Keaton needs to be wind and dined. You need to spend pretty penny to get him if he's still available. Uh, let's see. Tanner Hudson, Luke Musgrave, Tyler Conklin might be one of my favorite streaming tight ends this week. He's been really, really involved. He's pretty much Zach Wilson's like second favorite target behind Garrett Wilson. Six for 66 two weeks ago, seven for 70 this previous weekend. They get Buffalo. So uh, if, you, if you're desperate and you need a streaming option, Tyler Conklin, yeah, you could do worse. Jaden Reed, I, I think he's just solidified himself as the number one passing option for Jordan Love. So he definitely needs to be owned. I can't believe he's only owned in, what is that, 30? He's only rostered in 31% of leagues right now. Um, as you can see, like his PPR numbers are fantastic. Last four games, 19.4, 7, 12.3, 11. Has down games every once in a while, but that's what wide receiver threes do. But the guy who has upside like this where he can score over 19 fantasy points for you, pretty sexy. They get the Chargers next week. They get KC, the Giants, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Minnesota. It's a pretty damn good schedule for Jaden Reed, who has outperformed pretty much every wide receiver on that team so far. Darrell Henderson is like sneaky, kind of interesting, just given the fact that coming off of the bye, Matt Stafford should be playing, should be good to go. And Kyron Williams is set to miss one more week. So it's a little bit risky, given the fact that we don't know how the split's going to be between Royce Freeman and Darrell Henderson. But I think you could probably do worse than Darrell Henderson. You could probably do worse than Trenton Irwin, too, because Trenton Irwin had a, a nice game, two for 54, caught the nice touchdown in the corner of the end zone there. Um, T. Higgins, they play on Thursday night. And I don't expect T. Higgins to go in this one. We'll have to keep like a close eye. But if T. Higgins is out, Trent Irwin pretty much fluctuates solely dependent on whether or not Higgins or Jamar Chase are playing. And again, if T. Higgins is not playing, Trent Irwin becomes a borderline full-time player. 81% of the snaps last week. And now you are attached to one of you know top three, four hottest QBs in the NFL in Joe Burrow. So you could do worse than him. Who else is not owned highly here? Royce Freeman, same thing goes with him, as I said, for Darrell Henderson. Uh, they're both kind of like coin flips on who's going to have the big week. Odell, I really want nothing to do with. He had a season low, 33% of snaps. He did have the one big play, one catch for 40 yards on the slant that he took to the cribbo, but he also had a season low, two targets only. So I don't know if he's getting phased out of the offense or what happened, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying that Odell sheesh. And we see... Big Pat. We see Big Pat down here sneaking to the bottom of the list. This might be the time to stash him. He might return week 11. Uh, he will almost definitely be back for week 12, if not. I don't know. Kenny Pickles is extremely uninspiring, uninspiring, non-inspiring, whatever the right fucking phrase is. Uh, he can't throw multiple touchdowns in a game, and Pat wasn't doing great prior to that. He did have two touchdowns, but his floor, like his yardage totals in the games that he did play, three, two, and seven. That's Wow, I didn't even realize it was that bad. That's 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 something else. He was one of um, Kenny Pickett's favorite targets, however, uh, all of his rookie season. So I'd like to think he can regain form. So if you want to stash, you have some luxury there with Pat Firemuth. I don't hate it. I do want to talk about defenses for a second because this is a strong defensive streaming week because you have a lot of teams at home as heavy favorites. So like you might not think of maybe Miami as a great defense. You definitely don't think of Washington as a great defense, given, you know, they got rid of everybody. But when I look for streaming defenses, I want teams that are playing at home, and I want teams that are obviously favored to win. And you have a lot of these. So Detroit right now is a 10-point favorite at home against Chicago. That's a great streaming defense. The Dolphins are 12-point favorites at home against the Raiders. I love that as well. The Commanders are 10-point favorites at home against DeVito and the Giants. Those are all like options that you can probably stream at least one of those or two of those are available on your wire i like jacksonville at home six and a half point favorites against will levis and the tennis and the tennessee titans offense that are struggling they just scored six fucking points so those are all like those are four really really good options what i would do is probably just look at like if multiple of them are available who do they play the next week who is likely to have uh the best spread the best matchup um, at home, like Detroit's at home against Green Bay. That's good. Miami is at home against, or no, they're on the road, but they're against the Jets. So that's pretty good. Like that is how I would differentiate. It probably wouldn't be Washington. Yeah, they play at Dallas, but still a good streamer if they're the only one available in your league. All right, we will quickly move over to the trending down tab and I will stop on players that I would not drop. 
Uh, Zach Moss, I would hold on to because his value is super high. If JT goes down, T- Taysom Hill. You know what? Listen, I'm not going to talk about anyone who's like 75% because people aren't really dropping him. Michael Thomas, I think he's droppable, to be honest. Mm, I'd hold on to Jahan Dotson. Two big games, and they get a great matchup against the Giants that uh, Dak and Dallas just fucking torched. So I think he's startable this week. I would still hold on to Chuba. He's the starter there. You can drop Osborne. I would definitely hold on to Rashid Shaheed, given Michael Thomas's injury. I'd hold on to Josh Downs. He's an absolute baller when healthy. I don't think I have it in me to drop Christian Watson, but honestly, I, I don't think I blame anyone at this point if they did. Oh, oh, we just had a real time trade happen in this league. This is a this is redraft. This is tiered PPR, I think. Or no, it's full PPR. Yeah, it's full PPR, tight end premium, super flex, obviously. We have Terry, Kenny Pickett, and Tank Dell for Matt Stafford. What the fuck? Oh, God, that's disgusting. Hugh Hef. Hugh Hef, please. Oh, wonderful. Hugh Hef is the fucking guy I'm playing against this week. Oh, that That's an awful trade. That is so bad. Pierce, how desperate are you at how desperate are you at QB? You have Stroud. You have Kenny Pickett. I, that feels kind of crazy. You could have shopped for more than that. Sheesh. Okay. I'm the commish. I don't veto trades, so I'm not going to veto trade. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to talk a whole lot of shit in the chat now. Fuck. God, Hugh Hef's going to fucking torch me this week now. Love to see it. All right. Well, we'll end on a depressing note then. If you want to make me undepressed, non-depressed, I believe they call that happy. You can go over to bdge.co, sign up for the waiver wire rankings. Those will be live while you're watching this. Um, We have fab suggestions. We have rankings. We have our weekly rankings on there. You get access to Q and Assault every Saturday, which is a private live stream where you can ask me any sit start questions you may have for the week. So bdge.co, become a big dog member. Love you. I'm out.